Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here with another special edition of the show. I'm here with Laurent Pio. Right. All right. I had that. Um, I had to be told how to pronounce it yesterday because I was saying Pilo, not Pio. Um, over here at uh, see Lauren and Laurent and but yeah. Um, so we're at your domain. And uh, you've been very kind enough to take me on a tour of your facility. We went into the vineyards. It's really hard to see because the camera and all that, but we went all the way up there and uh, to, to look at some of your vineyards and had an incredible view. Um, so uh, and now we're going to sit down and talk about it and, and taste, taste a couple of wines. And I just want to first ahead of time, thank you for taking your time. But let's it's all about you now. So I've okay. done, I'm done with me. Um, so tell me about you and the, the domain and, and the history and everything. Okay, so our uh, domain is a family business mm -hmm. uh, for a few generations now in Chassang. My, my ancestors are from Chassang. I have ancestors in the 17th century living in Chassang. Okay. So it's a long, long history <laughs> in this small village. And um, Today, I would say the winery is a blend of different origins mm -hmm. from my uh, mother's side uh, with uh, Colin, so, uh, some vineyards coming from uh, this Colin family side and also vineyards uh, coming from my wife's side family in Pomar. So today our winery grow grapes in eight different villages in Côte de Beaune, uh, mainly in Chassagne and also in Pomar. Mm -hmm. But we have well-known names like uh, Volney, Meursault, Puligny, mm -hmm. also puligny Moraché. Total 15 hectares. <coughs> All the grapes uh, come to Chassagne at the wine museum. One facility, one new facility in Chassagne, and grapes coming from uh, all those vineyards. Okay. Um... And I, I mean, I got a real, besides, you know, a really great domain, I kind of have an important person here, the deputy mayor. <laughs> so um, I always, I always seem to find the coolest people. So, um, uh, but yeah, so you've, you've got that and you've been the, how long has the domain actually been in operation? So the so domain really started with my great grandfather. Mm -hmm. uh, he was also a cooper and a winemaker, okay. but he had good opportunities to buy land at that time. So the man extended with my grandfather, uh, who abandoned the barrels for uh, the vine growing. Right. He was uh, uh, only producing barrels for uh, himself. Okay. Uh, so the, yeah, this, uh, my father then uh, started to work with uh, his brother, then he split. Uh, when I was uh, still at school, to mm -hmm. have their own domains. Okay. And uh, my father started uh, his own company in 85 or 84. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. And then I came back from school in 88 and started to work with my father. Then we uh, started uh, uh, the domain Fernand and Laurent Pio in uh, 92. Okay. Exactly. And then you used to be in Chasson? The, yes, the, the winery used to be in Chassang at my parents' house. Okay. Then uh, in uh, '93 we added much more vineyards from my wife's side, and uh, we needed more room, definitely. <laughs> right. So we decided to move uh, where we are now uh, in '94 to build okay. a brand new winery, everything new, uh, um, and a new place. Mm -hmm. So not downtown Chassang, but. Uh, below the slope where the land is cheap and where we, are, we can have more room to extend, and that's what we did. 
it's uh, a logistically have... much easier right yes I yeah mean, much easier to work and uh, better condition for us for the wine <laughs> mm -hmm. very nice yeah um so we uh you took me into uh the winery itself and uh kind of tell tell me about how you operate when you you know when you bring the grapes in because you have like kind of a mobile somewhat of a mobile even though you have a a, a you know you have a, a building here you have some mobility with your equipment uh, yes we, we try to uh respect the grapes as much as possible so mm -hmm. no pumping no uh no must pump mm -hmm. this big close <clears throat> Uh, so we uh, work next to the, the tank where the grapes go. So um, we have uh, the sorting table, the, the distemmer, everything can move next to each tank. <laughs> That's right. Right. Okay. Mm. It's uh, very cool. Um, so a couple, a few years ago, I, when I went to Napa, I visited a, um, a winery called Palmaz, and there's this, a similar idea, except the tanks move. The where where the sorting table is stationary and it's above everything, and they have twenty five tanks and it's on a carousel and the tanks move underneath it. So different, same idea, just different execution. Yes, um, but true. yeah, <laughs> but yeah. So you can you can do very much the same thing. You said you're you're basically a gravity. Yes, um, we, we um, uh, for me it's uh, really important to uh, work as best as possible in the vineyard. Mm -hmm. to get the nicest grapes as possible and uh, so we um, we employ many people during the, the season to work on the canopy so so we have the, the grapes uh, uh, not all together uh, but really separate with mm -hmm. a nice aeration in the canopy so and then when we bring the the old cluster to the winery it's the same thing we want to respect the, the, the grapes uh, the, and uh, we don't want to to crush them to to pump them. So okay, yeah. <laughs> so it goes by gravity. So the sorting table is quite high, and then uh, it goes to the distemmer, and from the distemmer to the tank with a belt. So, okay, yeah. Um, and then so your red wines, um, you distem. Um, and but you don't crush them, right? No, no, no. Uh, that's right. So the pinots are not crushed; just mm -hmm. stem, and uh, so we ferment all berries. Mm -hmm. Right, that's right. And then, but you do a little bit of uh, on the on the Chardonnay. Well, both the Chardonnay and Aligote, you do a similar beginning. Uh, yes, for, just for the sorting table. And yeah, then yeah. It, it goes to the press, so yeah. it's a light crush. It's not really crushed. Just. Uh, crush a little bit of the bunch of grapes and the old cluster go to the, t the press. Okay. And then uh, how long do they, how long do they stay? Uh, how long, how long do they, do they stay for fermentation or for uh, maceration and fermentation? For, for so the like, for example, this year, uh, 2017, the maceration went from 18 days up to 23 to 24 days maximum. Okay. So it's a little bit more than three weeks with the skin contact. Okay. So we have, uh, of course, a cold maceration after, and then it ferments. And then when the fermentation is done, we continue this maceration with the skin contact. Yeah. Until Thank we, you. we get. A lot of my viewers might not know what maceration actually is. <laughs> uh, so the. And we continue the skin contact after the, the fermentation until we get uh, the best tannins. Uh, so, of course, we work with the glass, we mm -hmm. taste the, the, the wine, the new wine, and check, uh, check with my son. We, we didn't, didn't speak about my son. We right, yeah. Works, uh, so, uh, you say he's in Palmar right today? Yes, he's working uh, with a tractor today. Um, so, uh, we, we, work, we make the wine with my son now. He has a very good palette, I would say. So very nice. Yeah. Uh, we we check together the the tannins, and when we get the best tannins, we decide to to press uh, the, the tank or, or not, or to leave a few more days. Okay. And uh, um, you do your own. Well, we have, that's that's a bit later in the process, and then everything goes to the barrel. Um, and you said that you really don't do any filtration. No, no, uh, that's right. Uh, they're uh, red. Uh, stay for 
more than one year in the barrels mm -hmm. and then uh, again uh, some aging in tanks before the bottling so we can have the last settling in the, the tanks right and uh, no filtration mm -hmm. and you can consider a red wine without any deposit in the bottle it's uh, okay. uh, after 15 18 months it's it's fine it's clear enough right yeah mm -hmm. and then the white wines uh you do just maybe just a little bit just for clarification so that the wine, the white wines are clear, right? right. Um, and how long do they stay in barrel? So at least one year, mm -hmm. all the wines uh, go through barrels um, for one year, and then some of them they stay, continue the aging in the barrels after racking, and some uh, some of them they go to a tank for a few more months before the bottling. Okay. And we heard most, most of the barrels. Sorry, most of the yeah. barrels we we can use them for the new vintage coming mm -hmm. after one year. Right. So we empty most of the, the barrels. Just the, our best wine. They continue the aging. Okay. Uh, still in wood. All right. And then actually, I got to hear a little bit of fermentation uh, with with mm -hmm. the Chardonnay. And uh, kind of tell me about or I, well, you already told me about it, but we'll we'll let them know about. Um, so. It's going through some fermentation now, and then eventually go through malolactic. But then, what is ha what is ha what happens in the winter time? Uh, yes, so the the reds ferment in, in big tanks, open tanks with a skin contact, so mm -hmm. it goes quite fast. The fermentation takes a, a week, ten days maximum, right? <laughs> because it's big volume, you have this energy. Uh, uh, the white. Uh, they have a different way, so it goes to a barrel with uh, the juice to ferment into the barrel. Mm -hmm. And uh, the fermentation lasts for uh, three, three, three weeks, sorry, uh, one month, uh, sometime more, one month and a half, two months. So okay. uh, we hear some uh, <laughs> barrels still right. fermenting. Mm -hmm. uh, more than one month after the harvest. Okay. And then um, we leave the wine in the barrel, barrel for natural uh, malolactic fermentation, the secondary fermentation, and uh, it takes place during the winter time, or before the winter, or after the winter, because we uh, we leave the temperatures uh, down during the winter time. Right. So it naturally it naturally stops the process. And yes, then... of course. So the the yeast uh, the they don't like the they don't like <laughs> the, the cold. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then, so after all that, then uh, you bottle everything yourself, right? Instead of uh, yes, we yeah. we we do everything by uh, ourselves. We bottle uh, with our own bottling line, a quite modern one. I changed the bottling line uh, just a few years ago, maybe four or five years ago. Mm -hmm. So we bottle by gravity when we we want. So it's a very um, in English, it's more... Uh, You're more flexible. More flexible, thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah, instead of having uh, to call someone a month in advance, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, it's more flexible, and so that way we can bottle uh, like two or three wines and then wait for a few weeks to bottle again two or three wines. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. Um, you know, it, some 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 wineries do what you do. Some of them have the bottling. I told you, like, the, my friends who have the... The winery up in Texas, they have a bottling truck that comes mm -hmm. by, and now I don't know how how they work it. I don't know if they have to make an advance notice in a month. I probably should ask them next time I see them how how much of notice you need to give those guys. Um, but I got to see a bottling truck, which that was kind of cool. Um, so we, we we did all that, and then um, you said let's go visit the vineyards, and I literally thought we were just going to go over here, and you took me up on top of the top of the mountain, top of the hill, yeah. and so tell me about your your vineyards up there. Uh, yes, yeah, so we went to a nice place. I like to, yeah. to stay. Uh, it's on a steep, sea, quite steepy slope, mm -hmm. uh, a little bit higher in altitude. So we have a very nice view of, of, of the uh, vineyards of uh, Chassagne Premier Cru, Morgeau. So this place is called uh, Grand Ruchot, Premier Cru Grand Ruchot. It is considered as one of the best Premier Cru of Chassagne. Okay. So you know that in Chassagne, we, there is a, an area in between Chassagne and Puligny with all those very well-known Grand Cru, Montrachet, mm -hmm. Batard Montrachet. Right. And um, it's about at the level 
the altitude of uh, Chevalier Morache, kind okay. of same soil, but at the opposite side of the village. So really not close to the Grand Cru, mm -hmm. but close with the quality of the wine. It's okay. a very good, very good wine from this place. And um, I really like to, to go there. It's, uh, the, the view and... Uh, it's a beautiful spot, I'm telling you. I, I took a, he, he saw me, I took a lot of pictures of of uh, the landscape and then took pictures of the soil and so yeah tell me about the soil um, that you have up there and, and and how the kind of how, how this whole valley kind of started uh, yeah it's mo mostly where we live it's clay and, and limestone mm -hmm. and uh, below this deep of good soil uh, you very quickly find big rocks <laughs> yeah and uh, then it's a heavy rock so uh, because of this rock, the, the slopes are quite steep, mm -hmm. and uh, we have many different types of soils because of uh, different uh, uh, geologic uh, fault we, we have uh, in that place. Okay. Yeah, so over time, things, so things shift, mm -hmm. so, you know, it, it, something will drop, um, so the, the soil changes, then drops, and then you have the erosion. Um, you even showed me that there's, I don't know why I'm pointing, you guys can't see it, but you showed me that there was a visible line where things change and the soil changes. And it's in the face of the rock. Yes. Right. Um, and you can probably barely see the, the so the vineyards back here, this is Alagote back here. Yes, the best soil you want to find mid slope mm -hmm. in Burgundy facing east, southeast, mm -hmm. um, and uh, mid-slope because uh, the soil is not too stressful, not too rocky for the, for the right. roots, and, um, uh, but uh, with a nice slope, so the, the soil can drain quite easily the water when we have too much rain, and um, when it's really dry, not too stress, stressful. So you never want to find the best soils in Burgundy, very high, very steepy, right. uh, but mid-slope. And here next to the winery, it's almost flat, and it's mainly clay, and then it's clay again. It's very vigorous. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. it's quite vigorous, so yeah. we grow just aligoté here. And the appellation is only Bourgogne aligoté. Right. On, uh, on this slope where we were, it's premier cru. Um, and you actually told you were talking to me about uh, soil and stress, and I mean you, you kind of talked about how people always say you want the vine to be stressed, and that I mean I've always been told that, but really you don't want it to be stressed too much, like just no, no. just a little bit. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So that so that you still have the, the vines, uh, they have to be healthy. <laughs> yeah. But not too vigorous. Right. Yeah. No, so, so, so in a way you don't want to have uh, big clusters, but uh, uh, small clusters with a lot of mirandage, uh, mm -hmm. uh, nice aeration in, in the cluster, so yeah, right. Yeah, um, yeah. Because I, I guess maybe uh, maybe other people have, have talked about stressing the vine, maybe they've just assumed that it was understood they don't mean completely stressed, but then again, I think there are areas that the soil is extremely poor and they, they, plant, they plant the vines there just because that's what they're going for. But it's right, the soils here are really poor. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, except vines, I don't know what kind of uh, corn you could grow. <laughs> right, you know, like you said, uh, farther south, um, you have your Centene, and then mm -hmm. what's the next area? Uh, uh, Marange. Right, and then uh, beyond that, now it's probably, it's more corn and other and yes. livestock, Cow. cows, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's, you know, that that's one of the things about uh, agriculture in general that you know whatever whatever the land gives you is what you grow basically right exactly. yeah um, so we did a great we had, had a great time up there on, on the slopes and we came back down and um, uh, showed me the um, your storage area mm -hmm. and kind of told me about that and said that that was kind of a what was the kind of the, the reason for the building was uh, the, yes from the beginning when we came here to build the winery uh, I had uh, ideas to extend and, and bring back uh, all the facilities uh, from Chassang down to here. So the last building is where we are now, mm -hmm. uh, with uh, the, the office, uh, tasting room, uh, labeling room, and uh, this uh, large storage. So we have enough room to store all the bottles and in very good condition. Right. Uh, we don't have to carry the <coughs> bottles in uh, another building in the village. So it's. Uh, uh, a gain of time and it's a gain of quality for the wine. Right. Too. 
and because the, the, the building is really um, well then the big isolation okay yeah <laughs> it's big brickles and uh, large brickles mm -hmm. and um, uh, natural uh, humidity from uh, from the soil and uh, right very good condition for them very good conditions um and uh tell me about tell me about this year's uh vintage you said it was a really good vintage for you yes we don't really want to speak about troubles, but we the last mm -hmm. <laughs> five years we had many troubles with the weather. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. And hopefully uh, this year went very well. Uh, with the early season, we uh, were just limited with uh, early frost, but mm -hmm. nothing happened. <laughs> hopefully, <clears throat> right. And um, we need a very nice crop in terms of quantity, but. Uh, for sure with quality too because we harvested the first days of September okay. and we had uh, no rot, no nothing bad on the on the grapes and uh, the wines uh, start start to show now but uh, I think it's going to be a very nice vintage especially for the wines the, the Chardonnay is also doing very well now okay and you said things started a little bit earlier this year than normal right uh, I don't know about the global warming, but mm -hmm. uh, it's hard to tell. Uh, but one thing is, is true that for the last two decades, we had a few very, very late, uh, early harvest. Mm -hmm. uh, f and August, first days of September, it's really unusual for Burgundy. Right. Uh, if you uh, want to interview my father, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he would tell you that in the 60s they were harvesting in September or October. Right. And uh, like uh, 11, a few years, all three started with all three, but uh, mm -hmm. 11 to uh, uh, 07, very early vintages, and uh, this year again. Right. Well, that seems to be a very common thing throughout the whole world that, you know, mm -hmm. things are. Um, uh, happening sooner than they have done maybe 20, 30, 40 years ago. Um, and for, for whatever the, 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 the entirety of, of what's going on, there's, there's definitely a difference now than there was in, in the past and whether that will continue or whether it will reset back to what it was in the middle of the 20th century. That's, that's for us to, to see what happens, but, um, you know, definitely something that, um, you can't ignore. And I, I really think that, um, uh, the farmers of the world, you know, can, can anything else, not even just like the pure scientific stuff, just, you know, this is what your crops do. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That there's, there's definitely, there's definitely a change that's happened. So something is happening. That's mm -hmm. right. So we, we have to manage this in a way the, uh, the wine, get this uh, still this nice balance we have in Burgundy mm -hmm. with the acidity and the ripeness uh, and this year we we kept we we still have a very good acidity in the mm -hmm. juice so in the wine uh, for a nice uh, burgundy balance right yeah <laughs> so you can understand that ripening uh, grapes in August uh, or in September it's much different Right, they may not uh, be. You get more uh, sun, longer days. Mm -hmm. uh, the sun is uh, higher. <laughs> right, yeah. So, so um, quickly you can get the, the sugar level, but you want you don't want to burn all the acidities too. So it's nice to have uh, not too hot weather. Right. And uh, this year it's what we get. So we, we get a, a nice summer weather, but not too hot. Mm -hmm. So we... we have this nice balance in the wine and in 17. Right. Um, and then, uh, then you also told me about how, uh, how, how you farm um, as far as uh, not using any, any chemicals and pesticides. You've been working towards that. Yes, we, we, did, we slowly moved to uh, uh, soils without any chemicals. Uh, and I can say now for uh, four years now, we don't use any more chemicals to, mm -hmm. to burn the, the, the weeds and the <laughs> right, yeah. So um, we uh, work with the soils with the, the tractor. We plug the soils and mm -hmm. at the end of winter and of course in April, May, June. It's a hard job, but uh, right. we can have a little bit of grass and more life in the soils. 
on these small uh, animals, you can right. see uh, <laughs> that uh, we're not more in the miniature uh, with all those chemicals. Right, yeah. So we do not have any labels. I want mm -hmm. to stay quite free with all those labels. Uh, right. There is just one here, it's called Ecofito. It's a group of winemakers. We work together in a way we find the solutions to, to load down everything with uh, those uh, chemicals. Right. Um... I mean, again, that's another thing I really think that's be, at least in the wine world, I, I'm not really with any other uh, agriculture that I, I don't really follow a lot of other agriculture than, than grapes, but it seems like that's uh, another trend in many places that you're trying to be more, uh, I guess, respectful of the land. And, and if, yeah. you're, if you're using a lot of chemicals, um, you're, you're, you're taking away the nutrients and you're, you're kind of, um, uh, how do I want to say that? Um, you're, you're, it's time, I, I know I can't even say what the word in English that I want to use, but you're, you're removing a lot of, a lot of the nutrients. You're making it, uh, uh, barren very much, you know, very, you know, it's just, it's just dirt with nothing in it. You know, like you said, now you have, without that, you have more life to it. Yeah. And, uh, another thing is quite, Personal, but we do work in the vineyard. Yeah, and you live uh, right next to my, it. <laughs> and I, uh, I live in the vineyard. Also, my house is in the, in the middle of the vineyard. Um, our company is quite small. We have uh, 15 hectares. It's, it, it seems big for Burgundy, but it's still a crew of uh, four or five people working mm -hmm. for me. Um, so we go in the vineyard with our employees. We do uh, all the job with them, mm -hmm. driving the tractors or walking by hand with the canopy. And you don't want to have uh, this ke those chemicals on your skin. Right. And uh, it's our health first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and also for the soil, not to have chemicals going to the water. And, the water table. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, uh, yes, if we can stop or low down a few things, it's uh, mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, the way uh, it should be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Well, um, we we have some wine here. Let's let's get into some uh, some wine that you that you have uh, set up for us. What are, what do you have in the glass today? So uh, first wine I uh, want to show you is the uh, Chassagne mm -hmm. uh, fifteen. Okay. Uh, so it's a, it's not a comic, it's a Chassagne village. All right. Uh, it's a uh, it's specific place of Chassagne called uh, Les Chênes, just next to the Premier Cru Maltois. Okay. 15. So this one was bottled after little bit more than one year and uh, okay. aging. And uh, 15 is a uh, vintage with uh, um, summer that was quite hot. So the, we get this ripeness mm -hmm. uh, already from the nose. Right, yeah. But don't think it is like oat three. It's not very, very hot, but it's uh, a little bit different compared to uh, 13, 14, okay. uh, with uh, bigger acidities. Here we, we get a, a different balance. Okay. dry, nice mm -hmm. uh, fruit flavors, a little bit of uh, flour, and a good acidity on the tongue too. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, I speak Especially a lot about the, the balance of the wine, but it's true that um, it's really important to get this uh, nice acidity uh, that is quite typical of our burgundy white, whites. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's uh, because of uh, not too hot weather and uh, cooler nights too, so we, we still keep uh, this acidity. And that, that just helps with preservation of the wine. And mm -hmm. um, I mean, it, I'm not saying you're going to be holding this for 30 years, but 
you know, definitely this is something you could keep for a few years. Yes, the, the acidity is like bones in your body. It's, yeah. uh, it's not, uh, uh, you need them. Right. Uh, but it's not the old body. <laughs> right, uh, yeah. It's part of the wine. It's, uh, but, and then you, you need this acidity to, to, uh, to have the... Your structure. To, for the wine to, to be stand up. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. And, uh, but I like that yeah, analogy. I don't want to focus just on the acidity. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, li I, like, I like that idea that maybe the, the acidity of a wine is like the skeletal. It's mm -hmm. like you're, it's, 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 it's not the whole thing, but it kind of gives you that, that base that you can, mm -hmm. you can build on. I like that idea. I have to use that more often. <laughs> so uh, there is a kind of fashion right now with a burgundy white to be very mm -hmm. mineral. That's a word mm -hmm. you can uh, hear everywhere. Yeah, that means a whole bunch of different things. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <clears throat> minerality. And um, you, uh, in the 80s, 70s, the fashion was more on very rich, full-bodied whites. Now we focus on very mineral wines. So I think in between there is something to do. Uh, I don't like a white when it's really uh, very strict mm -hmm. and uh, quite just linear. I like the, a white to be uh, also with a, a nice volume in your mass. Right, yeah. So we need this ripeness of the Chardonnay also. And we get this in 15. Right, yeah. Yeah, this is, I mean, you definitely have a, I think you, you, you really described it well. There's a balance between, mm -hmm. there's not a lot of sharpness to it, because, you know, but, but you've, got, you've got a little bit of, of uh, roundness, a little bit of full, not, not, not a full blown, just full bodied, no. Um, Chardonnay, but you've got you've got something there to it, yeah. Mm. You know, and, and you've got some good fruit with it. Yeah, there's definitely a um It's not too lean. It's not too full. It's kind of just right in the middle. Um, something that you could, you know, I, I would have be a lot of flexibility with 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 food pairings. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's one of the things that, you know, we that I try to talk about in in, in when I do any wine reviews is um, food pairing with with it. What what food would go well with that particular wine that I'm having, um, or just 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 letting people know that. Wine isn't always, and a lot of times wine is really meant to be shared with food or paired with food and not just, you know, water that you just drink on its own. There are some wines that are very refreshing on their own and you don't need to have any food with. But Yes. Um, so, uh, Chassagne is a uh, white wine that can uh, fit from the aperitif uh, mm -hmm. through the whole meal to the cheese. Right. And so... Uh, Yes, you, you can have it just like we do now, uh, just for uh, without anything. Mm -hmm. It's perfect too. Right. Uh, but of course, we like to have our wines with good food. <laughs> so right. Uh, yes. Uh, living in France, you need good food. So <laughs> I've been having some good food. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we are far from the the ocean, but uh, our whites uh, fit very well with seafood, with uh, uh, fishes from the ocean. Uh, a lobster with a chassagne white that mm -hmm. is a few years old. It's, it's a perfect match. <laughs> You're actually telling me that uh, chassagne is um, uh, mostly white. It's about what you said, oh, 70 percent. Seventy percent white. Yeah, about two two third white. Okay. Still, um, but it was more of a red wine apple apple or area uh, quite a quite a while ago. Right. Um, Chassagne, uh, I don't know exactly, but 30 years ago mm -hmm. was uh, half red, half white. Right. And uh, because, of the, because of the repetition of the Chardonnay, uh, there, there are more whites uh, than uh, Pinots in Chassagne. Okay. The way it is now. But uh, you have the areas in Chassagne that were mainly with white, mm -hmm. specific uh, 
que place like uh, les vergers, premier cru, um, uh, Schönbot, it's a place uh, where you grow white for decades. Uh, of course, the Grand Cru, it's mm -hmm. 100% white. Right. <laughs> but um, south of Chassang, there is a an area with more, uh, we'd say, heavier clay. Uh, where the soil is really nice for the pinots too. Right. And um, maybe because my uh, origins uh, are from Chassang, <laughs> I want to save some pinots in Chassang. And next year, uh, I will uh, put uh, south, uh, south of Chassang, so uh, this place, mm -hmm. I will put uh, some pinots uh, again. <laughs> Very nice, yeah. Um, so the area in general is 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 good for for either one. It's not it's not something that's really yes, uh, it needs to be one or the other. Uh, we we could have uh, long discussions with uh, certain areas are better for Pinot you know, than and then Chardonnay, but as uh, yeah. a whole, um, you can you can you can find s smaller you can find little pockets that are mm -hmm. good for Chardonnay and good for Pinot Noir. Yeah. If you yeah. ask colleagues, they we they would have maybe uh, they will have a different. Uh, Discussion, uh, yes, it's uh, <laughs> for me, for, uh, on my own opinion, mm -hmm. a very good soil fit for white or for red. Right. That's my own opinion. So if one day somebody will, <laughs> a crazy guy, will <laughs> uh, want to put uh, Pinot in uh, Le Mans Haché, I, I think it would produce a, a great Pinot too. Right. Uh, not just, there are some more difficult soils, uh, more clay or more uh, limestone mm -hmm. uh, that fit more for Chardonnay or for Pinot. Uh, for sure, uh, I'm thinking about a, a place in saint aubin where we used to grow uh, Pinot. And uh, this place is really, the soil is more brown white than in Chassang where you find this uh, red uh, clay soil. Right, yeah. And um, now it's, it is Chardonnay in that place in Saint-Aubin and uh, with uh, this more uh, uh, calcaire and limestone soil, mm -hmm. uh, the wine is, is much better for the, with uh, Chardonnay than it used to be with Pinot. Right. I'm very happy with my Saint-Aubin now. Um, with Char Chardonnay. And same thing in Chassang, there are soils with a lot of clay. And um, I think you would produce Chardonnay that are a little bit too fat, too, you know what I mean? Yeah. Not enough finesse in, mm -hmm. uh, in those uh, wines coming from the heavy clay soils. Okay. So I think with some soils, Chardonnay is better. Uh, with some others, uh, Pinot is better. But for the best exposure, well, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes. So the, the soil is really, really important in Burgundy. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to say we do nothing after that, but if you can buy a, a very nice uh, area, for sure you will grow a great wine there. <laughs> right, yeah. Well, I mean, and, and Burgundy is pretty much the place where the idea of terroir is... is, is yeah. I think more more important than anywhere else. I know the entire country terroir is, is important, but mm -hmm. it really feels like um, this area is um, the importance of it. I guess is is even more so. Whereas, say, someplace like we'll say Bordeaux, while they have terroir, it's more about other things than mm -hmm. really here. Um, and uh, and and. I mean, they, they, we talk about, even in the United States, we talk about the idea of terroir, but we don't look at it exactly the same way that you look at here. But they, they kind of get it. They, you know, where, where this area is good, you know, the soil, not just the soil, but everything else you know, along with it. Um, you know, they, they look at that. But yeah, it, if you want to under, understand the idea of terroir, study Burgundy and, and your, your brain will fry. I mean, mine's, mm -hmm. mine's already just. <laughs> with uh, looking at all, all the maps and, and driving out here and, and looking at all the areas. Well, ju just a very simple thing. <laughs> it, just, yeah. <laughs> just after the rain, you uh, take a pair of boots <laughs> yeah. and you walk in the vineyards and you will see a big difference. Yeah. Uh, in some place with a lot of small stones where the soil drains the water very easily, okay. uh, it's okay. And in other places, uh, like around the winery, mm -hmm. where it's really clay, you have 
Medicine. <laughs> well, you're saying if it, Tons it, of medicine. Your that's why you don't want to do things like plowing before no. the winter time <laughs> here because it's going to be too hard to, to walk in there, right? Right. Yeah. Um, I asked I asked him about the tractors I kept seeing. The harvest was basically done, but I saw just tractors out there and we were talking about what they were doing in the vineyards. So. Yes, yes. We start to leave the winery and work outside. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We, uh, I was living in my wine, winery for one month. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, I don't have my bed in the winery, but it's <laughs> not, not far. <laughs> right, yeah. So no. now, now uh, we can uh, change for uh, another job. <laughs> right, yeah. And we start to, uh, as uh, the leaves uh, start to fall down, we mm -hmm. can work with the tractor and, right. and soon start to prune. And get ready for next year. Mm. Yeah. Exactly. Um, are we going to do? Are we going to do anything else? Did you? Yes, uh, uh, right. I, I brought uh, 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 Chassin des Bergers. Okay. Premier cru. It's a um, uh, premier cru where the, the slope is not. It's, it's a very very gentle slope. Okay. But. Uh, the rock is uh, it's really rocky. <laughs> lots okay. Of stones, so rocky. lots of drainage. Uh, yes, and uh, there there is a the, the soil is really brown red. Okay. So it, it means there are lots of iron oxide uh, mm -hmm. in the soil, and uh, you have a few on this table, so it's hard to see with the camera, but uh, it's not so it's iron. So it's, we find uh, those in the energy. Okay. It's very, uh, so you see that? Yeah. So it, uh, Almost looks like a tree trunk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, these, yeah, these rocks on the table aren't just for decoration. <laughs> <laughs> they can tell you a story. So, Le Verger 15. All right. So, if there is one place where you want to find minerality in Chassin, it would be Le Verger. Okay. Because of, of lots of rock, you get uh, very fresh fruit flavors in Le Verger, always. And uh, a very good minerality. I don't like to speak about minerality too much because it's a fashion word. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, here it is. Uh, and you want to talk about debates. You can have all kinds of debates what minerality is, what, what it actually means, because it's a very generic term yeah. that just uh, kind of just basically means it's not fruit, but it's not earth. But earth can be mineral. That's why it's very hard to describe what minerality is. It's almost like terroir. You know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's the psalm. It's the sommelier word like terroir. It's like it, it just it, it encompasses so many things, and it's kind of like this. You can't pin it down. It's very really hard to identify um, exactly what it is. And a lot of psalms and, and probably other people in the industry think it's an overused word. Overused. Um, yeah, it, you know. <laughs> I never. Uh, stones, I, so I don't know what. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, you know. So when when we describe wines, you know, sometimes we smell, you know, actual because uh, like one person, not one person, but many people say minerals have no smell; they have no taste. Mm -hmm. But rocks have taste. Rocks, you know, have, have a smell. But then there's things that are kind of like the earth side of things that, that have aromas and, and flavors to it. But minerals themselves have no smell. So minerality is more of a concept, I think, than a, yes. than a for, specific. For me, um, minerality in Chassang is uh, some elegance, mm -hmm. good acidity, uh, something. Um, and of course, a little bit of smell of the stones, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's mainly this uh, elegance you find in this wine. At the end of the mouth, you see this uh, nice freshness you have, uh, and uh, it's a wine uh, in a blind tasting that is uh, quite easy to <laughs> to find mm -hmm. uh, because it's a little bit different. Right. Yeah. 
you know, definitely it's similar to the last wine, but um, there's definitely, um, I, th I think the elegance, the refinement, there's, the um, and that's just because it's a premier cru. I just, feel, right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know that. I mean, that's the obvious thing, but I mean, there's, there's just definitely um, a difference in, in the wine. And again, it really comes down to the terroir. It's a premier cru, it's more body wine. Mm -hmm. Uh, so wine you want to age a little bit too. I like to have my uh, whites when they are four or five years old mm -hmm. because you still have this um, youngness in the wine, fresh flavors, some ripeness. Then the wine is more mature, not, not too old. And you take no right. risk uh, aging four or five years. Uh, okay. Of course, when uh, I like to have some very old wines too. Uh, two days well. ago, with good friends uh, from Chassagne, colleagues and uh, good friends from the Alps, connoisseurs. <laughs> yeah. I opened a '92 white from Chassagne that was so nice. Still. Yeah. But um, of course, you take risk and many. Old wines are done uh, or <laughs> right, yeah. dead, and, uh, but this one was so nice with uh, mm -hmm. nut flavors, bitterness. Right, yeah, yeah. So with the so yeah, we got we got nuttier because of the oxidation and mm. yeah. I want to show you something. 16. So, okay. I told you we grow grapes in uh, Meursault. Mm -hmm. It's right. uh, one vineyard called the Caillet Premier Cru. Well, actually, okay. it's two small uh, vineyards next. Le Caillet in Meursault is a, a place that is very small. It's a little bit more than one hectare. I think it's one hectare and a half, maybe less. So we are just a few wineries growing grapes there. Okay. So it's not well known like uh, Perrier or Genevrière with uh, larger volumes. Mm -hmm. Of course, Perrier is the formist one of the <laughs> top, so it's also well known. But, uh, uh, voilà, Cayenne from uh, 16. 16 okay. uh, so it's uh, just bottled. Just bottled, right. Sixteen, we lost a bit. It's the uh, hail, right? Uh, no, 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 the, the, the frost. Frost, I'm sorry, yeah, sixteen with the frost, yeah. But in Verso, it's a little bit higher in altitude, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, we had almost nothing in this vineyard. We lost maybe ten percent, so uh, okay. it's, it's not a big loss. It's a normal, uh, normal yield. Okay. After the badgers. Uh, <laughs> How did, so what was the name of the badger in French? What was that name? The the, the animal. Oh ah, no! Oh, ah, we uh, uh, <laughs> Yeah. And you were telling me that that's uh, for like the shaving brushes. That's the hair from. Yes. That's uh, the animals what they used to make uh, the, the the hairs from the shaving brush. So um, here, of course, we have more fresh, fresh fruits mm -hmm. uh, like uh, citrus, orange. Mm -hmm. It's uh, very young. It's very nice. Mm -hmm. Very nice. I have a feeling that you might need to go here soon. <laughs> that uh, you might, we may have to end this pretty, pretty shortly now, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, th this is a, it's a beautiful wine. Um, all the wines that you've shown me are, are outstanding. Um, it looks like we're going to have to probably wrap things up, which is fine because we've been talking for quite a while, and I know you have a lot to do. This is a very, this is a small operation. It's not like a really big operation where you have a ton of people to do all the stuff, and this is a very active winery. You're still, 
I mean, I saw I saw the delivery of of look like uh, boxes and and other stuff. So I mean, everyone's doing stuff around here. Um, I just wanted to appreciate the time that you've spent with me, and we've been here. I've been here since nine, so we've been here for about two and a half hours. So um, it's a lot to expect someone to give me their time uh, with with a small operation like yours um, and sharing some incredible my, my, wine. My favorite. <laughs> sharing some wonderful wine with with me. I really appreciate it. Um, if somebody wants to come by and visit, the, they definitely contact you to make an appointment. Right, um, right. Yeah, they can't just stop in. No. No. Yeah, uh, and that's most of that's most of Burgundy. You really need to make something in advance um, right. if you're going to visit yeah. some places. I know there's some really large operations that that look like you, you still probably should call ahead, but you could probably just show up. But places like yours, you really need if if they can see anybody. Not everybody can. Not everyone can see people, um, but they definitely want to make an appointment, that, uh, right. definitely in advance, and not like the day of or probably a few a few days, maybe a week or so in advance. A week. Right. Yeah, yeah. So that someone's here. Um, but definitely, I'll have a link. I'll have a link uh, for the uh, winery, um, so that uh, if you do want to visit, you can let Laurent know that uh, you'd like to visit, and if he's able to, or if someone's able to. They can they can exactly. say yes you know if not then they, they can't if I have if I am here if I have time it's not a problem yeah just uh, uh, by appointment only. by appointment <laughs> yes yeah and and realize that you know you might not be able to come because you know there might be other things going on so um, I, I, I can go skiing on the winter time too. <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly. Um, so we're going to wrap this up. Um, as always, click the links above to friend me up. Uh, we're going to make sure I have a link to the, to the uh, domain so you can get more information about it. Um, I want to thank you once again for um, having me here and showing me all over the place. I go into the vineyards and um, spending some time with me. Uh, it's been an honor and it's been very educational too. The whole purpose of me coming out here is to educate myself. Uh, because, like I said, you can look at maps all you want and pictures, but unless you come out here, you can't see what's going on, you know. Um, so thank you very much. Avec plaisir, merci. All right. Uh, folks, that's going to wrap it up, and we'll see everyone again next time.